Hi all, hope everyone is enjoying week 7 of Tinker's Summer Code Jam. I'm Roland, and I'm back again to show you how I made my arcade game, Comet Zone. So here we're starting off with just a blank project. There's no actors in an empty stage. The first thing I'm going to do is add the actors we need for this project. So there's going to be a spaceship actor, a comet actor, and a score counter. I'm going to add those. The next step is to add a background to the stage. Open up the stage options and then click add background. Here I'm uploading my own background. Next I'm going to adjust the size of the actors. We want the spaceship to be small. So I'm going to use something like 25. The comet should also be small, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to end up randomizing the size. For now I'll put in 20. I'm also going to move it off screen so we don't see it. Awesome. Alright, now we're ready to start coding the spaceship. So the spaceship should follow the mouse pointer or touch location until it hits a comet. Let's start by adding an on start block. Now let's use a repeat until block to have the spaceship keep moving until it touches a comet. Because we're going to end up using cloning, we're going to use touching clone of comet. This will make it so the code inside will repeat until the spaceship touches the comet or a clone. Let's go ahead and pick comet. Next, we want to have the spaceship point towards the mouse pointer, move, and then wait. The weight is there to just make sure it doesn't move too fast. Let's go ahead and try this out so far. Looks good. Let's go ahead and now also add a move condition. We only want it to move if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than some number. Here I'm going to use 10. If you don't use this if block, there will see, be some weird movement when the spaceship eventually does reach the mouse pointer, because it'll keep trying to move towards something that's right next to it. Alright, this looks good. The next thing we're going to do is that an explosion effect, because we know if this loop ends, it did touch the comet. So here, I'm going to click sounds and add an explosion sound. For costumes, I'm going to add some more costumes for the explosion. Perfect. Alright, so the first thing we should do is play a sound for the explosion. Here we can select the explosion sound I just picked. Next, I'm going to add a small loop that goes through the frames of explosions that I just added. I'm going to use the next costume starting with block. And then here you can see your one to five explosions. 
I'm gonna go with the this explosion and then just remove the one. So this will start with explosion one and then go to two, three, four, five. I'm also gonna add a weight here to make it more smooth. Finally, when we're done, we can hide the spaceship at the end. Because we just added a hide block, we should add a show to the beginning of the code. Also, because we're changing the costume, we have to make sure to reset the costume at the beginning. So I'm going to use a switch to costume block. And switch it back to the spaceship. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Great, now our spaceship is basically done. So now we can move on to the comet. Our comet will have two chunks of code. The first will be an on start that'll have to do with moving the comet to different locations randomly and then creating a clone of itself that gets launched towards the player. The second chunk of code will actually control that movement and how it moves across the screen. And that will be with a clone startup. Let's go ahead and drag both of those out now. So we're going to start with the on start first. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So because this on start applies to the comet actor, and the player won't actually see it, it'll be off screen. We can start with a hide. Now, we're going to use a forever block to spawn the comet for as long as the game lasts. An important part of this game is randomness, so we're going to create a random variable. I'm just going to name this rand. Now we're going to set this random variable to a random number between 1 and 4. Now, there are four possible options for where we want the comet to spawn in terms of what side of the field it should spawn. It can spawn above the player, to the left, under, or to the right. And then of course at any point along that edge. But we're going to use this to pick basically which of those four general locations. So now we're going to add an if-else block corresponding to each of these options. So the first condition is if rand is equal to 1, which is the first number. We're going to continue this for the other branches. But check 2, 3, and then the remaining condition will be if it's 4. So if rand is equal to 1, we're going to say that this is the top of the screen. So in this case, we want to place the comet actor along this top edge, pointing downward. This is a little tricky at first, um, and my advice with these kind of things is to just try it and just see if it looks how you want it to look. If you try to spawn it along the top edge and it's the bottom edge, you can just sort of work from there. Um, I definitely didn't get this right the first time. So here we're going to use a pick random to go from the left edge to the right edge of the screen. Because that represents the X coordinate of the location. And then the Y can be fixed as the positive top edge, which I found to be around 450. So now if Rand is 1, it's going to go somewhere along the top edge. But the second thing we need to do is point the comet downward, so that eventually when it gets cloned, it can continue to move downward. I'm going to drag a point in direction block and then use this tool and select 180, which represents downward. Next, we're going to spawn a comet on the bottom edge. 
So what we can do actually is just copy and paste this block and change this so it's negative 450 instead of positive. We can use another point in direction block and pick zero, which represents upward. Awesome. So now we're handling the top and bottom spawning locations. If rand is equal to three, let's make this the left edge. So this is a little different because the left edge would be a fixed X location and a random Y location. I found the X location to be around 750. And then the Y location will use a random block. I think around negative 400 to 400 is pretty good. So now we need to point rightward, which is 90. And now we're done with rand equals 3. So this last case is if rand is 4, which will be the right edge pointing left. So I'm going to copy both of these. Change this to positive 750. And point in direction negative 90. This looks great. The final part of the on start code is that it needs to clone itself. So the comet is bouncing between these random locations and it needs to clone itself and then the clone will actually continue in the direction that it's pointing. So let's grab a create clone of block and set it to self. Finally we're going to use a wait block to make sure it doesn't spawn too many comets. Great, now we're done with the on start code and we're going to work on the clone startup code. So now clones are being created at random points along the side pointing towards the player. What we need to do now is actually move it towards the player. The first thing we should do is use a show block to actually show the clone. Because the comet generator is hidden the whole time, we need to show it when a clone is spawned. Now, let's set the size of the clone to be a random number. We're going to use the set size block and pick random. I think between 5 and 35% is good for this comment. Next we're going to do the movement code. So for the comet's movement, it basically should continue until it moves off screen. For this, we're going to use a repeat until. Now here there's a pretty long condition because we need to check whether the ship is too low, too far left, too far up, or too far right. So I'm going to grab a bunch of ore blocks. And here are our four conditions. So first, I'm going to check to see if the X position is less than negative 750, which would represent the left edge. Next, I'm going to check to see if the X position is greater than positive 750. Similarly for the Y, we can check to see if it's above or below 450 and negative 450. Now, while this is true, we need to move the comet. Let's pick a speed of something like 3 maybe, and then let's add a wake block to make sure it doesn't go too fast. Once this condition has been reached and it breaks out of this loop, we want to delete the clone. 
This means it was off screen. Great. Let's test out what we have so far. Looks great. The last step is to set up the score system. For this, I'm going to move the score up to a Y position of around 300. I'm going to change the font to white and make it bold. Next, we can use a forever loop to try out our score system. We're going to set the label to score and then here we need the value of the score. For this game, I'm just using the timer. To make it cleaner, I'm going to use a round block. Let's go ahead and try this out and see if the score is working. Yay, looks good. But notice how the score keeps going up even after the spaceship exploded? That's because we don't have any way of, of telling the score that the spaceship has exploded. So we need to set some variable. So let's go back into spaceship and create a variable. We want this variable to be for all actors. I'll call it playing to represent whether your spaceship is still playing or if it has exploded. When the game starts, we want to set playing to true. And when you have exploded, we want to set it to false. Now we can go back into the score actor, and instead of using a forever loop, you can use a repeat while to basically repeat while we're still playing. Finally, I'll rename this actor to score. Finally, let's add a good luck and game over message. Here I'm going to use this say block. We're going to say good luck for three seconds with the bottom plain message box. And we're going to set the font size to 20. I'm going to copy this at the end and say game over. And with that, our project should be done. Let's test it out. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Comet Zone, and I hope everyone has enjoyed making arcade games this week. Be sure to stay tuned for week 8 of Tinker's Summer Coach Jam. Thanks everyone!